Comment déplacer votre résidence fiscale et expatrier légalement vos profits en Lettonie Dans cette vidéo, nous nous entretenons avec notre conseiller Letton, un avocat basé à Riga et spécialisé dans la structuration internationale et les investissements immobiliers. D'ailleurs, c'est le même qui supervise tous nos investissements à Riga. Et dans cette interview, nous allons comprendre quels sont les principaux avantages de s'installer à Riga, quelles sont les questions récurrentes lors d'une implantation, comment créer une société, la forme juridique la plus courante, les banques utilisées par les hommes d'affaires internationaux. Commençons par la première question. Quels sont les principaux avantages de s'installer en Lettonie en tant qu'entrepreneur C'est parti. Uh, Riga is the biggest city here in this region, like not only in the in, in terms of Baltic states, but also in the region. Uh, it's very uh, like uh, as you mentioned, a vibrant city uh, in the in the summertime and uh, in the winter time. There's also plenty to do. Uh, Almost every uh, person here you will meet will talk um, English and mm. also Russian. So we are attractive not only for uh, English-speaking pe people but yeah. also from the from the countries that uh, are speaking Russian. So basically, uh, as a big city, it has a lot of offer. Uh, also in terms of business or uh, or in terms of um, social life. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there were some times when, uh, for example, uh, Belarusian companies were uh, looking for opportunities to where to relocate. Okay. It was quite a popular destination uh, once they visited the city. Uh, so, so you can see it's a big city. Um, in terms not only in business or yeah. business opportunities, but also in the social life. Social life also. Yes. And, uh, The airport of Riga is a nice hub, well connected to, uh, I would say, almost all uh, European countries, and and the airport is quite quite a nice place to stay. It's not a mm -hmm. one of those small airports. Uh, we have a good uh, cooperation with the Turkish companies uh, handling the airports, so uh, they they've been here for uh, eight ten years, and. Uh, That, that's that's what the, it's attractive here that you can get very nicely here okay. uh, have a good, we have direct good, flights yes and then good flights wherever you want to go Dubai uh, yes we have direct flights to Dubai and then uh, also to uh, I would say all the major European destinations mm, okay beautiful so great place for business um, how does it rank um, in terms of ease of doing business over here I know mm -hmm. Estonia is For example, in in quite a good place, mm -hmm. but in, in in a good spot. Here, I assume I see I walked around and saw uh, Playtech, for example. Mm -hmm. um, does the country attract the startups? Uh, yes, we have a startup law. It was uh, uh, developed or uh, added quite recently uh, for terms of. Uh, Um, making this uh, registration way much easier and uh, this is the one uh, way of relocation that uh, companies are choosing they are, if they are startup companies they can apply for a uh, startup permit and they can bring uh, their employees and, and, and shareholders at Riga and that's the way, one way how to start up here a business it's like registering a startup company okay. and getting immigration uh, done on basis of that. Okay, uh, I'm sure there are some financial requirements and the numbers of people that you need to hire for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are some requirements, but uh, as, as, as we all know, the startups, they are like small companies, they are starting their business, uh, that's why they're called startups. So the requirements are not very uh, high in terms of, uh, I mean, the initial start startup requirements. So basically you just present your idea and uh, there are no requirements of uh, like previous experience or okay. some um, minimum limits you need to uh, like like reach by applying this to the start so with a business plan maybe with the resume and uh, with the motivation it's, it's way much easier I would mm. say it's not uh, you don't have to uh, even uh, like like prepare such kind of a business plan that you are going for example to get the finance at the bank okay here we call it one pager. Wow. On one page, you just describe your idea, but it should be a real startup idea. It's, it mm -hmm. should be something new that uh, would uh, help not only your business, but also like develop our uh, country's business or be beneficial for us. Yeah, wonderful. So what are the main problems people have while relocating to, uh, to Latvia? Mm -hmm. I would say the main problem would be uh, to relocate from the countries that are outside European Union. Okay. Because we have 
uh, kind of similar laws here inside of European Union once we are relocating from more exotic places or somewhere outside where the laws significantly are different then we have some kind of uh, challenges to like explain what that document means or that we cannot get such a document that is uh, used to here that we cannot get it uh, abroad so this is a kind of uh, explanational job and this is uh, where the lawyer helps a lot mm -hmm. because uh, we know the local laws and we are quite uh, used to uh, servicing different nationalities, different jurisdictions so we yep. can explain why this doesn't work like that in a... For a specific country, yeah, yeah. in a specific case, in yes. a specific document, yes. uh, translation in either English, I assume, Latvian, Russian. Yeah. Uh, well, all the documents here should be translated, yeah. so this is uh, also something that should be... Needs to be a uh, it yeah. needs to be official translation, or it if, can be if, done... If it's outside the European Union, yeah. then, then it should be upstyled and uh, not tried. And this is, I would say, this is the biggest hassle for the clients that are yeah. relocating outside of European Union that uh, you need to gather gather all those official documents mm -hmm. but every country has this the same like this uh, hassle uh, to gather gather the documents you need so quite easy for a European member or a citizen and uh, and um, more hassle it's normal it's yes, normal for yes, yes. outside uh, of the EU all the businesses inside the European Union they are quite simple and um, we have similar laws in each country so it's 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 not such such a big uh, deal to, to, right. to manage. Yeah. Mm, what is the most common limited liability company over here and how fast it, does it take to, to open one? Uh, it depends on the complexity of the uh, investor structure. If you are just a person... Uh, like, for, for example, for an online entrepreneur doing e-commerce, uh, consulting, mm -hmm. these types of uh, businesses. If you want to do the business or if you want to register here a company as a private individual, it's uh, very easy. If you, are, if you have the opportunity to come here to Latvia, mm -hmm. uh, we can go to the notary or, and, and, and do this registration like in um, one to three days. It's, it's one to three days. Yes. Okay. It's, and it's, what would be the documents needed? Uh, documents. There are some some kind of set of documents you need to uh, prepare. That is done by the lawyer. Okay. Uh, it usually takes like one two business days to clarify all the information to check if the uh, name of the firm you want to register is available. Is available. Yes. And 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 uh, I would say the most simple uh, simple procedure would be that a private individual come here. And, and, and register the company. It gets more complex if uh, you if the structure you want to register is like a complex structure or right. or, or the holding. Yeah. Uh, if this new Latvian company would be owned, let's say, by an Estonian company, and mm -hmm. this Estonian company is owned by a French company, then right. you need to prepare all the documents because, uh, as you know, we have these strict AML mm -hmm. uh, anti money laundering rules or or, or non your client rules. Yep. So basically, you need to gather all the documents to show. Uh, who actually controls or owns the company, okay. which we call true beneficial owners. Uh, that is the thing that could make a bit uh, more complex this registration. So for process. a single shareholder company, it's quite straightforward. Yes. And normally, maybe does it does it take a um, 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 stable place of residence over here to have an address in order mm -hmm. to access the business registry and so on, uh, like in Estonia perhaps? You have you, you need to choose one uh, business address where you will be right. reachable. Okay. Uh, for example, if tax administration would like to ask you some questions, yes. you need a, an address where they can reach you or send you a letter. So it's a legal address, it can be legal address service uh, with uh, a person of contact for people that yes. don't res reside in, in, in Latvia. But for those that live here on the spot, do they need uh, such an address or do they need a contact person? Uh, the ones who live here, yeah. uh, if you want to relocate here to yes. Riga, for example, mm -hmm. you're usually uh, renting an apartment. Okay. You can uh, agree with the owner of the apartment that you can register there also a company's address. Same in Estonia. Yes. Same as in so, Estonia. Okay. So it's uh, it's not a big hassle. Yeah. There are also some uh, virtual office services in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in Latvia available. So even if you don't have the address, you can uh, agree with them okay. and they can issue an acceptance that you can register the company there right. and you'll get all the mail coming to your company there. Makes sense. And what's the, for a single shareholder company or with 
with both associates for a limited company, the, the share capital amount is uh, it's uh, two thousand eight hundred uh, euros. Two thousand eight hundred euros. Okay. Okay. And and this is not something you need to freeze or hold on your company's assets. Okay. Uh, you just need to pay this share capital, and then later on you can use for company's needs, like paying for an accountant or right. for a lawyer or okay. for a legal address. So it needs to be on the company's account uh, upon the creation, or upon it can be deferred. Upon the, upon the creation, okay, yes. on the cor corporate uh, company account. Yes. Okay. Foreign board members allowed? I'm sorry? Uh, the foreign board members are also on my account. Yes. Uh, when you register a company here, there are no specific requirements okay. uh, that you need a local uh, board member. Right, okay. Uh, if you are a single shareholder uh -huh. uh, with the foreign origins, you can yeah. be a shareholder and the board member of the company. There's no Beautiful. requirements, and and it also applies not only to to EU citizens but also to any nationality. There are no requirements there. Clear. In terms of banking, what are the best banking options for international business owners here? Uh, it depends a bit from the origins where you're coming from. If uh, you are from European Union, mm -hmm. there are no absolutely no problems with which bank you choose. Citadel, yes. Seb, Swed Bank. Yes, and uh, but in terms, if if you are coming from regions that are not inside the European Union, mm -hmm. it depends uh, because uh, we don't have such a large number of banks, okay. and each bank has uh, its specific portfolio uh, of clients of origins they are used to. Uh, so basically, it depends from the origin of the client. Here also, all the banks have quite a nice uh, online banking system. Right. Can, yes, and you can do all the uh, transactions online. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's, it's not a requirement uh, to be present here. Uh, the only issue is that for opening a bank account, uh, yes. I would say that each bank would uh, require for at least once come one, one visit, of one course, visit to perform to, the KYC yes. to make sure yes. that uh, they know the customer, yes. and and then and then it can be managed from wherever, wherever you, where okay. you need it. And do we have like an e-residency card here, like in uh, Estonia? Yes, we, we do. do have, right? Yes, mm -hmm. we follow the uh, good example of Estonia and created the same uh, e-residency card as Estonia. So basically, uh, once you get this uh, e-residency card, uh, you can do uh, all the transactions you need in Latvia uh, remotely. You will have this uh, digital signature. Uh, you can go to notary visit, uh, which is an uh, online visit. You don't need to visit notary like uh, at, at the office. So basically, you can log in. Yep. The notary will find you, and mm -hmm. you can uh, sign the documents, let's say, while living in Bali, for example. Right. Yes. And a word about taxes. How can you speak about corporate, uh, personal? Mm -hmm. How does it work over here? Tax application and tax regime is something that is usually uh, discussed with a tax uh, advisor. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, our corporate offer... is the zero tax on re reinvested profits. Yes, and... this is one of the benefits companies are uh, using. Yeah. It was introduced uh, se several years ago, uh, where you re where you can uh, reinvest the profit and you uh -huh. you will not have any uh, corporate income tax. That's beautiful. Yes. That, that... That's a good incentive on developing the business mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, paying ourselves. And personal income tax, is it a flat, flat tax of 20% plus, plus social, social tax? It's, it's not a flat rate. It okay. also depends uh, what kind of type of uh, income you are getting. Yeah. I, I, either it's a salary or, or, or uh, you are like self-employed or, or a self-employed person. Uh, and uh, it depends also on the amount of money you are, uh, you are gaining. Right. Uh, because there is a uh, program aggressive rate. About this uh, income tax, I can also mention that, for example, uh, if you own an apartment or the building here yep. and you rent it out to somebody, yes. uh, there's a flat rate. Uh, you just need to declare that you are getting an income here and uh, like pay this tax. Capital gains uh, for real estate, they, they are exempted of tax if, for example, mm -hmm. one lives in the property for two years. How does uh, it there work there are some exemptions, yep. but uh, usually it doesn't work for short-term short -term transactions. Oh, so so basically, sense. if you are buying an apartment uh, and selling really fast, there will uh -huh. be a capital gain. For sure. Uh, so, so uh, the exemption is whether you live there actually yeah. and have declared your address, and uh, there's only one property that you own. Once it comes to a professional business, which is reasonable, if you have 
have had like five or ten transactions, there will be a capital gain. Si vous avez aimé cette stratégie, eh bien, vous aimerez la prochaine vidéo dans laquelle nous vous présentons notre avocat pour que vous puissiez à votre tour investir légalement en Lettonie. C'est uniquement disponible pour les membres de Life Invest Heritage. Donc, si vous n'en faites pas encore partie, eh bien, cliquez sur le premier lien qui se trouve en description de cette vidéo ou agrafez dans le premier commentaire.